But first, we turn to Steve Harrigan, who says he's hearing tanks and rifle fire in Kyiv for the first time this morning. Steve. Carly, for the first time, we are hearing small arms fire, including rifle shots, as fighting now is inside the city of Kyiv, the capital city here. The Minister of Defense for Ukraine is saying Russian forces have technically entered the capital city. They are in the region of Oberon, which is about six miles north of the city center where I am. It's not clear whether they're going to advance further towards the center or not, but certainly a lot of frightened civilians on the outskirts of Kiev today. A lot of people running for shelter as close contact and fighting is going on along the outskirts of the city. Many of these Russian forces came from the north. They had to fight their way through Chernobyl, stirring up a lot of radioactive dust in the process before taking control of that area, which is a radioactive zone. Overnight, we heard a number of explosions, missiles, including one fighter jet that was shot down, and the debris caused a fire in an apartment house as well. As far as the president goes, Zelensky, he says he's staying put here in Kiev. He says he is Russia's enemy number one. Here's Zelensky. According to our information, the enemy has listed me as target number one and my family as target number two. They want to destroy the country politically, terminating the head of state. Ukraine says after day one, they had 137 soldiers killed. Already after one day, 100,000 refugees, people who fled Ukraine. Guys, back to you. This is a major moment, Steve. This is the moment where Russian troops enter the capital city of Kyiv, something that so many residents never thought possible just 24 hours ago. And you have to wonder, uh, what happens next? Are we talking hand-to-hand -hand combat with um, citizens? We know that the government has um, said that they're going to provide guns to citizens, people just like you and me. Or do you think Russia will make a more targeted approach, uh, march directly to the capital, and try and take out the president. I'm not sure if you can hear that. It sounds like uh, thunder behind me. It is artillery fire. So the fight now is not far away. Overnight, we could hear. Overnight, we could. Uh, U.S. officials said it was 20 miles away. Now it's probably five or six. It gets closer and closer. So really. We don't know how tight the circle is going to be. How close to the city center will the Russian forces come? We know it's likely they want regime change. So someone's going to have to come in here and do it. Will it be armored vehicles or will it be special forces? We don't know how big that circle is going to be around this capital. But they are fighting for control of it on the outer edges right now. Steve, this is now two days in a row, the 5 o'clock a.m. hour for us, the noon hour for you there, that there has been some type of activity that you have referenced live in the shot. You're our colleague, Steve. We're hoping and praying that you're safe. Do you feel safe? Uh, you know, it, it's. I think anyone's under stress in these situations, and anyone with, who's sane would be scared. You know, you hear a car door slam and you're worried. I think we have a good plan. We have good security. But the people who I feel for are people who are stuck here, people who might not have the means to run away, people who have children. It's an unimaginable agony and stress that people are under here because they're in a capital city. They're going about their life. You see old people with canes waiting for the bus, and now missiles and rockets are hitting their city. They did nothing wrong, and now they're in terror. Yeah, yeah, that image of the families really struck me, Steve, because yeah. I saw this video yesterday of a little boy hugging his mom, and I just thought of my own kid around the same age and not knowing what I would do in that situation. You're so right to point out that these people are under such stress. It is a horrible situation, not of their own making. Yeah. And just really quickly, um, there have been cyber attacks that have happened in Ukraine, but still uh, the president can communicate with the Ukrainian people through Instagram, so that is still up and running. And one of the videos that he he recently posted. This is sort of a rough translation, so bear with me. He says, according to our information, the enemy marked me as the number one target. My family is the number two target. They want to destroy Ukraine politically by destroying the head of the state. I will stay in the capital, stay with the people. During the day, I held dozens of international talks, directly managed our country, and I will stay in the capital. My family is also in Ukraine. My children are also in Ukraine. My family are not traitors. They are citizens of Ukraine, but I have no right to say where they are right now. Steve, he is in significant danger right now. And I was hoping you could just speak to this moment of a 
a democratically elected president in a, Euro, a modern European city um, in this level of danger and the resolve that he's showing right now? U.S. intelligence has said that the Russians have lists, that they have lists of prominent uh, opposition figures and also Ukrainian politicians that they're either going to capture or kill. And here the president of Ukraine, as you say, popularly elected, a newcomer to politics. What a job and what a position he's in now. He's basically saying the Russians want to destroy our state and the Russians want to destroy me. They want to destroy and kill not only me, but my wife and my children as well. That's where he is right now. Yeah. Absolutely chilling. Yeah, absolutely chilling. Steve Harrigan, thank yeah. you, sir.